I'm wearing my Android shirt today, which can only mean one thing. We're testing Android development on the M1 Max. All right, so let's jump right into it. Here's the tests that we ran and why they matter. We've got two contenders today. The i9 from 2019, it's a fully specced model. It's got 64 gigs of RAM. And then also we've got a M1 Max, of course, 2021 with 64 gigs of RAM. If you're an Android dev, uh, an application engineer, you use a lot of virtualized containers, this video is definitely for you because we're gonna do a lot of comparisons on uh, work that requires a lot of RAM. It's very easy to chew up uh, RAM on the M1 Max. I've noticed that just like the i9, they're both very similar in that regard. I typically use about 40 to 50 gigs of RAM daily. Uh, and that's just like a running average because I've just got so many different virtualized environments and IDEs and things like that open. Let's get started. I used a program called Android Studio Poet. What's really cool about Android Studio Poet is that it lets you generate Android Studio projects, as I guess the name implies. But what's really neat about it is that you can generate an insane number of modules, a number of classes, methods, all the way down to whether or not you want Java or Kotlin classes. And this is really valuable for our test today because we're gonna generate a massive Android project. And then we're gonna compile it, lint it, and verify it. And we're gonna do that on both the i9 and the M1 Max, just so that we can get an idea of what happens when we go from idle all the way up to maximum energy flow, getting as much uh, compiling done as possible in a short amount of time. Um, so estimate from me is that the i9 is gonna take at least 15 minutes to crunch through this because the project's similar to the one that I work with on a daily basis. I have no idea what the M1 Max is gonna do, but I'm really excited to see. So what's really important about these tests is that we're starting both devices from idle. We started them up and we let them just cruise with no applications running, and that way we hit a baseline on both. And then from both devices, what we do is we generate this Android Studio project using the same configuration file on both, and then we go through and run the verification steps. Uh, this will be an assembly, uh, tests, and lint as well. And from that, we'll be able to see uh, all the different Gradle tasks that are being run. And of course, we'll be able to start benchmarking over time the amount of heat. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a heat reading every two minutes on the uh, top keyboard and on the underside of the device. And the reason why we're doing that is because it's a laptop, it sits in your lap. You know, it's, a, it's the important pieces here are, are my hands gonna get uncomfortably hot and is my lap gonna get uncomfortably hot? So we're gonna learn a little bit about both of these devices with this test today. All right, so here we go. We're gonna use the generated project to clean and then assemble. Start our timer, take a heat measurement of the center of the keyboard. And we're also going to take heat measurement underneath. We're at 83 degrees Fahrenheit for both the top and bottom of the device at the zero minute mark. And I do not hear any fans at this point. Still very quiet. Take another reading here shortly. You can see here we're using 40 gigs of memory, just getting this thing compiled. And that's because I increased the heap size. So that Gradle couldn't complain. All right, two minute mark. We're at 94 degrees for the top. and 90 degrees on the bottom. No fans, not hearing any fans. Okay, we're hitting the four minute mark. The top is at 101 degrees Fahrenheit. And the bottom
is at 89. Interesting. Let me make sure I got that. Oh, no, the bottom is at 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so it's getting it's getting hot for sure. Put my hand on it. See, it doesn't feel doesn't feel too bad. Like I wouldn't that wouldn't be too bad in my lap. That's not bad in my lap. I feel like this is a good test because I mean we're really pushing a lot of time doing a lot of different tasks here. We're using all the different cores. Our activity monitor is letting us know that we're using up a lot of memory on this device. I mean, we look at this, we are right at 52 gigs of memory being used, all these Java uh, threads that are kicked off. And then the CPU usage is also just very high, which is good. We're, we're, we're not idling a whole lot here. So this is really nice to see that we're really pushing this machine. For at least software development. So we're approaching six minutes here, which I feel like we're also about to get to the end here because it says 99%. 104. And 103. Okay, so I think we've kind of leveled out here. It's... Uh, Four and six, and we're done. Uh, we finished the build in just about six minutes and 29 seconds, which lines up with our our little timer over here. Uh, what we saw was, you know, at idle, we we're cruising at about 83 degrees Fahrenheit, which is nice because that's cooler than I am, um, at least cooler than my body temp should be, and then. As we got two minutes into the build, we saw that the temperature rose, and then at the four minute mark, we t we it looked like we plateaued. We hit about 100 degrees, um, 102 degrees, and sustained that throughout the remainder of the build process. So it looked like the M1 is able to uh, get rid of that excess heat and at least keep keep moving forward. So we're going to take this exact same project, exact same configuration, go take it over to the i9 and see what happens. I need to add a wrapper. On the other project I had to do this too. Create a Gradle wrapper. Great. All right, now we've got a Gradle wrapper. Why am I doing this? There we go. All right, let's get ready to start. Here we go. All right, so at the zero minute mark, we are at 108 degrees. So already this thing is just on fire. The zero minute mark, the temperature of the I-9 is already hotter than the hottest temperature of the M1 Max. So the underside is 112 degrees Fahrenheit and the top keyboard is 108 degrees Fahrenheit. The hottest the M1 Max got during this process was 103 degrees Fahrenheit. That was on the underside. So very interesting. The i9 is way hotter. Oh. Also worth noting, uh, almost instantly the fans kicked on. All right, so the top is 112 degrees, opposed to 108 that it was before. And the bottom of the device is 118 degrees. So it's definitely climbing. The fans are loud. Fans are getting really loud. I, I, could, I hear, heard it go up several decibels stepped up at the two minute mark. 
it's interesting that the i9 gets more uh, Gradle uh, tasks running simultaneously. The M1 Max kept it to the number of cores, so there were only 10 tasks running on the uh, M1 Max. But on the i9, you can see there's well more than eight cores. Eight, I, i9 only has eight cores. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it's doubled. So it's an observation for sure. So eight tasks. And the i9, for some reason, decided it needs 16 tasks. I don't know if that's going to cause an issue for the i9 or not, like, I wouldn't imagine it, like, that would be a good build strategy, but here we are. All right, so we're approaching the four minute mark. So we're at 114 degrees Fahrenheit. We're at 120. Fans are loud. Fans are very loud. All right, let's feel the bottom of this thing. Very hot. I mean, it's just dumping heat. It's amazing what that 20 degree difference is, like how, how much hotter that feels. And just for reference, we remember the M1 Max completed this clean and assemble in six and a half minutes. All right, so the top is reading at 116 degrees Fahrenheit. and the bottom is reading at 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And the fans are super loud. Wow. All right, so we are now at the point where we are taking longer than the M1 Max. The i9 is, is taking longer to compile this project. We are 30 seconds past the M1 Max in compilation time. That's incredible. The M1 Max beats the i9 in every single category with 67%, that's insane, 67% faster and with 16% less heat. I have been using the M1 Max now for an entire week and that battery anxiety that I've had with the i9 all these years is completely gone. Aside from that, the M1 Max does not get uncomfortably hot. Yeah, I saw today that we hit 100 degrees with sustained compilations times, but we did see that that graph pretty much just tapered off and leveled out. Uh, I was really excited to see that because in my personal test too, when it's sitting in my lap, I never feel like it's uncomfortably hot. It, it just cruises along and just feels like a laptop. One of the things that just recently happened that I feel like I've lost is that I'm programming on the couch again. It's something I just couldn't do with the i9. It was too hot and uncomfortable to do that. And the second thing, coffee shops. So my local coffee shop has no outlets whatsoever. So whenever I would go there with the i9, I would get anxiety about the battery because I couldn't find an outlet. So I'm really excited that with the M1 Max, that won't be a problem anymore. So that's it today. If you're an engineer in any one of the professions that I've mentioned, I strongly recommend upgrading to the M1 Max. Your workflow is going to improve incredibly just because of less heat, better performance, and wicked awesome battery life. Hey guys, I've really appreciated all the feedback and comments that you've been leaving me. It's been giving me a great energy to keep pushing forward and running tests for you guys. So if this was helpful at all today, please take a minute to like and subscribe. I really appreciate it, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks.